Hey, badass business owners, have your costs gone up and yet you still haven't raised your prices? What are you waiting for? You are bleeding profits and could be costing yourself thousands of dollars. In this video, I'm going to break down a couple of examples to show you how to look at your pricing and if you are leaving money on the table. Now, over the past few years, we have seen prices go up like crazy, and I'm going to bet the materials or ingredients you use in your small business cost more today than they did just a year ago. But it's not just products that cost more, so does the labor that goes into providing the service or making the products, not to mention some of the expenses in your business. Can you say gas? But for some business owners, they still have the same pricing they did a year ago. So let's take a quick look at how this has impacted your business's profits. Let's say you provide a service that you charge $60 for, and you average about 30 of these a week. Because you are a great student of mine, you know that the number one calculation you need to know in your business is sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. This works for your profit and loss, but also for a great gauge on setting your pricing. If you want to learn more about this, check out the video below in the show notes where I dive in deeper. But let's stick to this particular topic. So let's take your $60 item and see how that profit line looks both a year ago and now today. So a year ago, we said you sold this for the same $60. Your materials for the service cost you $18. And because you have learned to include your labor hours in your costs, you also know that you need to include $15 per labor hour for your employee time because you're the one providing the service. Since this service usually takes an hour, your costs also include $15 thus making your total cost of goods sold the $18 plus the $15 for a total cost of goods of $33. Now your expenses on your profit and loss typically run you around 15%. So you know that you need to set aside 15% of every sale for your expenses, which is an additional $9. So if we look at our calculation, we know the following. $60 is your sales minus the 15 for labor and the 18 for materials, which means your cost of goods is $33. Now you're gonna minus the $9 for the expenses, and this leaves you $18 in profit, which is a healthy 30% profit. That's nice, but that was last year. What about today? Over the past year, the parts have jumped $2. And if we're being honest, the fair labor wage in your area has also gone up from $15 to $18. At least that's what the businesses are in your area are willing to pay for general laborers. Oh, and your expenses? Yeah, that one has also gone up due to how much driving you do in your business. And you've noticed that your profit and loss now tells you that your expenses are actually closer to 18% versus the 15%. So let's plug these numbers in and see what has happened to your profits you still charge the same $60. Your costs are now $20 plus the labor that has gone up at $18. So your total cost of goods is now $38. Your expenses have jumped from the $9 to now $10.80. So plugging it in, $60 minus the 20 minus the 18 for the total of 38 for your cost of goods minus the 1080 means that your profit is now $11.20 or 18.67% for your profits. That's right, you now make $6.80 less each time you provide this service. And since you do 30 a week, that is $204 of weekly loss over just a year. And assuming you work 50 weeks out of the year, that's a $10,000 loss in profits due to not adjusting your prices. I told you, you are leaving money on the table. Now let's take a look at a product-based business. Let's say you sell an item for $12 and you make this product yourself. So your ingredients, materials that you use run about $2 for each one. And since you make it, we need to include your labor hours. It takes you on average about a half hour to produce each one of these products. Your expenses are low and they typically run around 10% each month. Using the same process with our calculation, let's take a look at the facts. A year ago, this is what it looked like. $12 minus the $2 in parts, and using the same $15, half of that, because it's a half hour, means we include $7.50 for labor hours. The expenses of 10% means you need to set aside $1.20 from each sale. So that looks like this. $12 minus two minus the $7.50 minus the $1.20 is a profit of $1.80, which is a 15% net profit. Now, a year later, the fair labor in your area has stayed about the same. So you really don't need to worry about that. And because you don't travel, your expenses have stayed pretty much stable. The real area that you've seen a hit is in your costs because your materials have gone up a dollar from a year ago. 
And if your costs are up a dollar, you can bet that your old profit of $1.80 is now only 80 cents. You have gone down from a 15% profit all the way down to a 6.67. Oh, and let's say you sell 25 of these a week. That means you're losing $25 in profit every single week. And at, at 50 weeks, that's $12.75. And if you multiply that times all the other products that you sell, I'll bet you that number starts to get up into the thousands as well. Now I could do example after example, but I think you get the idea. Take a few minutes and dive into your prices and see what your profits are today compared to just a year ago. If that doesn't convince you to raise your prices, I don't know what will. And here are some pricing videos to help you understand your pricing better. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you get all the future videos where we talk about your business numbers and how to price better.